Hi everyone, my name is Chris Alfano uh, from Illinois Legal Aid Online. Um, so Miranda invited me here to talk to you uh, briefly about A to J and Hot Docs development and project management as well as the maintenance of those projects once they're complete. Uh, so I'm going to do this assuming little to no knowledge of A to J and Hot Docs. Uh, I know some of you are very adept and, and probably experts at A to J and Hot Docs, so some of this might be information that you already know, so uh, bear with me during those sections, please. Um, so a brief overview of what I'm uh, planning to cover. I'm going to talk about choosing between A to J author and hot docs for the interview component of a project, um, as well as uh, some development tips, including uh, how we structure our interviews at Aleo, as well as our uh, development process and some of the pros and cons of in-house development versus working with a project consultant, a uh, hot docs developer. Um, as well as uh, project maintenance and working with students, interns, and volunteers. So uh, when you start on a new automated document project, the first question that you're going to ask yourself is, do I want to use A to J or do I want to use Hot Docs for the interview component? And um, both have their uh, strengths and weaknesses. Of course, you're going to be using Hot Docs for the um, document portion. Uh, I know uh, the A to J folks are working on some basic um, document automation to build into the next version of A to J, uh, but for now, Hot Docs is uh, the, the only option that we have. But for the interview, um, you have A to J and you've got Hot Docs. Uh, A to J is currently Flash-based. The new version that's coming out, um, I'm told by the end of the year, is going to, uh, well, it's not Flash, so it'll run in anything. Some of the factors that favor using an A to J interview for us um, is if the interview takes less than 30 minutes to complete, uh, and that is because uh, we want that A to J interview to be um, be able to be completed in one session. Um, it does have a save and exit feature. I uh, feel that Hot Docs has a more robust save and exit um, component than A to J. So in Hot Docs, you can save it, you can save your answers, and you can jump back in. You can go to the dialogue and question that you left off on. An A to J author, you're going to have to click through to get back to where you left off on um, unless you build something more advanced into the interview, but you do have to build that yourself. Uh, so for the longer interviews, we do prefer hot docs. If the interview is targeted at users with limited reading comprehension ability, A to J is a great tool uh, because you have very little text on screen, but you can include more information in the learn more boxes, in the pop-ups, um, and it, it's not overwhelming for users who are not uh, comfortable reading a huge amount of text at once. And uh, it's also great for explaining the legal process um, to a pro se user. So, uh, for example, expungement. It's a, extremely complicated and not everyone knows what it means. Uh, in, in Illinois we have expungement which erases criminal records, we have sealing which hides the criminal records, we have all these certificates uh, and all sorts of other uh, relief that's available. So we can use that A to J interview to educate the user about the process as they're answering questions and filling out their form. Um, and then some factors that would favor using hot docs instead. I, I already covered it. It's, if it's going to take more than 30 minutes, then there's a good chance that users are going to want to save and come back to it later. So I do think Hot Docs is better in that in that circumstance. And if the interview is targeted at more advanced users, like advocates or um, more adept pro se users, even Hot Docs uh, allows them to get through more questions uh, more quickly. It doesn't have you can have help text, you can have the resource text, but um, I do feel that A to J does that better. So if you just want to have a bunch of questions that they can get through quickly, Hot Docs is great. And if the interview is going to collect a lot of information, like financial information, um, stuff like that, Hot Docs, again, is uh, what, I, what I prefer to use. So um, I do have a sample of a Hot Docs interview here. You can see, uh, for those of you who have not used it before, um, it's got the dialogues on the left-hand side, and each dialogue contains a set of questions. So they're going through multiple questions uh, in each dialogue. Whereas A to J author, they're seeing one question at a time. 
There's the learn more windows. You can have pop-ups, all sorts of help text. So it does help break things out more for the less uh, sophisticated users. I did want to talk also about uh, the interview structure that we use at Aleo. This is something that we've sort of developed over the past few years uh, before I think a lot of the interviews were all over the place. Um, so we do try to standardize uh, the way that we're collecting information in interviews. Um, and this is this is applicable for A to J and hot docs. It's going to be a little bit different in hot docs because these are going to be spread out not in uh, a single step like they would be in A to J author. A step uh, contains multiple questions in A to J, uh, but in multiple dialogues in, in hot docs. Um, so we start with the introduction, and that includes a legal advice disclaimer that the user has to agree to that uh, says we're not providing them with legal advice, we're not forming an attorney-client relationship, and all that good stuff. They have to agree to that before they can get started in the interview at all. And we can tell them what information they're going to need to complete the interview, and in A to J we can collect the uh, name and gender in this step as well so that we can um, generate that uh, avatar. Uh, next. We have the qualification section, and this is because uh, we want to exclude users who are not going to qual qualify as early as possible. I have seen interviews where um, they collect all the information to fill in on the form, and then it says, do you live in the jurisdiction? And if they click no, then they're out. It doesn't make any sense to me. You should be kicking out people as early as possible. Um, it wastes their time to be entering information if they're not going to qualify, and it's a frustrating experience for the user to do it that way. Uh, so collect that information early on. Uh, next, you can get into the case information, the substantive information that's going to be filled on the form, and that's fairly straightforward. Uh, then you can do um, notice information. Uh, so a lot of documents will require uh, notice be sent to the other party. So you can collect the method of service whether the other party is represented by an attorney. You can collect their address here if you like. Uh, you can also, um, for documents that need to be uh, signed and notarized in front of a notary public, you can collect uh, witness information here. And then in the conclusion step, you just uh, can briefly tell them how to save and print, what to do next, uh, things like that. Uh, it also is helpful to include um, an instruction sheet that prints with the documents that has instructions on how to file for those who are completing these forms at self-help centers, may not have access to a computer later, might not um, be comfortable searching on their phone for more information. Uh, just give them a, a simple one-page sheet that tells them what to do next. So our development process has also become uh, standardized over the past few years. And uh, for us, it starts with the scope document. Uh, this is just a Word file that explains the goal of the project, the scenarios covered. Um, you can have a list of the forms that are going to be automated and the order that you want them to print. And you can include an interview outline, um, even specific question text if you know what you want to say in each question and want to provide that to the developer. And then step two, you are going to work with the developer. If you're doing it in-house, then that's going to be a little bit different. But if you're working with the developer, you want to be communicating with them throughout the entire process. Always make yourself available, phone, email. And uh, one tool that I feel is just great is um, web conferencing. Uh, I think I saw Bob Aubin on the call, and we've used this uh, pretty effectively, I think, um, to demo features, to walk through. Uh, sections of the interview that the developer is working on. It's, it saves us a ton of time and it's a really effective tool. Uh, we use GoToMeetings, but there are tons of free versions available. You can use Skype, um, Google Hangouts, anything that allows you to share your screen. Uh, and then next, you are going to be testing uh, the work of the developer or your in-house person. So you uh, should test locally on your machine as well as on uh, LHI. And uh, you can get help from interns, other staff members, uh, ideally people who do not know A to J and hot docs as well as you, and maybe even people who are not lawyers so they can approach it from uh, a similar perspective uh, as your users. And then when you're ready to publish, you should communicate with partner organizations, uh, let them know the interview is available and it's ready for use. Um, 
course, you're going to want to check periodically for updates to the law, and you're going to be improving it uh, continually based on user feedback. So development does not end with, pun with publishing. It's, it's only the beginning. Um, and also briefly, I wanted to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of doing um, Adagen hot docs projects in-house as opposed to working with a development consultant. So some of the advantages of doing it in-house um, are that you have direct control over the development of the project. Um, and this may or not, may not be feasible for you depending on whether you have someone on staff with A to J uh, and hot docs knowledge. It's not extremely difficult software to pick up, but uh, if you were just starting out, um, I would say that you should stick to fairly straightforward projects. But at the same time, you can improve your A to J and hot doc skills by uh, taking on a few projects yourself in-house. And um, also, legal aid salaries being what they are, it is usually cheaper than uh, working with a uh, hot docs consultant. On the other hand, the advantages of working with the development consultant are um, the professional A to J and hot docs expertise that they bring to the table. Um, and it takes a lot less of your time you're just going to have to do the scope document and review their work later on, all the development work they're doing, and it's going to save you uh, a lot of time. And you could be working on other things. And also, the consultant brings a, an outside point of view. You know, you've got your organizational way of doing things. Um, the consultant may be able to offer advice uh, based on work that they've done in the past, based on their general knowledge of A to J and hot docs, and you might find that they come up with a, a better way of doing certain things than you had maybe originally thought of. And of course, uh, once the project is complete, you are going to have to constantly be thinking about maintenance. So uh, for us, um, we have about 75 A to J and hot docs interviews, and it has been uh, a bit of a struggle to keep them all up to date. So on that hand, I think you, you want to make sure that you're not doing too many interviews and you have an amount that you can manage and keep, uh, keep maintained throughout the years. So what I try to do is uh, at least every few years go through those older interviews, even if it's just once or twice, just to make sure that everything still looks good, that it's up to your organizational standards, that's still compliant with the law. Uh, and to help with that, you can subscribe to uh, bar association emails um, in relevant practice areas, and that can keep you up to date on changes in the law. And we do try uh, at Aleo to update the interviews ahead of the law change, and then when that law change goes into effect, we can update the interview on LHI. And so it's uh, seamless for the user, ideally. And uh, in addition to updating the project per changes in the law, you also want to think about user experience. Um, you know, you and, and your hot docs developer uh, might approach it differently than some of your end users. So you do want to be testing the new interviews with users if possible. If not possible, at least find some non-lawyers to run through them and give you their feedback. You can also do more formal testing where you ask the testers to fill out a short survey with ideas for improvement and almost do a focus group on your automated document. And um, so I think a natural transition is to working with students and volunteers. And, um, there are several uh, A to J and hot docs courses throughout the country. Um, the most prominent one is probably Professor Stout's uh, A to J and Hot Docs Practicum at uh, Chicago Kent. And we have worked with uh, those students many times in the past. And I think there are a few uh, pointers I can give you to get effective projects out of those students. Um, it's, it's great for organizations that are just starting out using A to J and Hot Docs because you can get a little bit of, uh, of a taste in A to J and hot docs without spending a bunch of money because of course the student is going to work uh, for free for you. Um, 
but at the same time, they're learning the software while they're taking this course, so it helps to provide them with as much help as possible. So I like to choose forms that the student can easily complete in one semester, and that's usually a one or two page form. That is uh, just about the most that I expect. Uh, it can be a longer form if you get a few of them to double up, but uh, don't want to give them, it, it's better to err on the side of them having something they can complete than giving them something too long and you get an incomplete project at the end of the semester. And I find uh, that it helps to provide that student with sample interviews. So if you do have them, if you have interviews at your organization, you can give them a few samples uh, and show them how you do your interview structure, how you do plain language, all that sort of stuff. And uh, if you have one, you can give them a standard variable set. So uh, one thing that I have is just a hot docs component file that has a lot of the common variables that we use at Aleo. So like um, defendant and plaintiff names, landlord, tenant, stuff like that, and maybe a few computations that put them together. Uh, and that's extremely helpful for the students. And it also uh, keeps things consistent with the way that the rest of your or, um, your organization's interviews are. And of course, you need to be prepared to spend um, a pretty significant amount of time testing and reviewing that project. Uh, it's not going to be the same quality of work that you get from a professional developer, of course. I mean, you know that going into it. So you're going to need to spend time testing, making sure everything works the way you want, reviewing the language. Um, you might need to make your own revisions to that at the end of the uh, at the end of the semester, but uh, it does save you some time, and you're helping a student to learn this software. So I do think there are advantages to doing it. Uh, in addition to uh, law students, you can leverage volunteer uh, resources by um, asking interns if you have them to help with testing and research. Uh, they have, um, well, the law school interns will have uh, access to Westlaw and Lexis, and uh, they probably have better research tools than, than you do uh, in legal aid, so it's great to take advantage of that. Um, Non-law school interns are great to get to help with testing because they are not uh, coming from a legal perspective. And you can ask for feedback from members of the public. You can uh, include a survey on your website. You can do focus groups, anything to get feedback because that is extremely valuable to know how people are actually using these programs. And uh, we do like to take advantage of undergraduate volunteer programs. We've done testing of our inter interviews with them in the past, and I do find that they are, are um, better for testing our pro se interviews than law students because they don't have any legal knowledge at all. They are obviously more educated and uh, more sophisticated than a lot of our pro se users, but still much, uh, much more of a similar perspective than law students would have. So that's all I have for you. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please contact me at the email address or phone number below. Uh, I would be happy to provide any sort of sample documents if you'd like to see any of those.